She's uh, been named one of the big uh, FIPS rising stars last year. She's editor at Olive Magazine at Immediate uh, Media in the UK. What is it? It's a British food magazine that celebrates its 15th year. Incredibly successful. And how that is going to work in the future too. She will now share with us how uh, foodies' desires are fed across multiple platforms with Olive. Laura, too great to have you here. Thank you. I'm going to hide behind this, so I hope you don't mind. OK. You have to forgive me, because I haven't done many of these, so please bear with me. Um, OK, so hello and welcome. My name is Laura Rowe, and several years ago, I joined the London Office of Specialist Interest in cont uh, Content Platform Business, Immediate Media. With loyal relationships with millions of engaged users across print magazines, TV shopping channels, online forums, and plenty more dis besides, I could see the great potential of one of its brands, Olive Magazine, that I had enjoyed reading for many years. I'm already going wrong. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> so I've been editor of Olive Magazine now for the past two and a half years, and I've been working across, across print and digital, local and national, freemium and paid for publishing for more than a decade. This year, the small but mighty Olive celebrates its 15th birthday. We started out in 2003 as a passionate print food title with the tagline, Cook, Eat, Explore covering delicious recipes from quick and easy dinners to challenging cakes for special occasions. We have chef uh, recipes and interviews, restaurant recommendations, and foodie-specific travel itineraries. We broke the mold of traditional recipe magazines. We were, and still are, trendsetting. We are listed as the highest indexing UK magazine for foodies, keen foodies, and super keen foodies. But we all know the way audiences are consuming, if you'll forgive the pun, their information is changing. Particularly as an immediate media brand, because we always put the customer at the heart of everything we do, we've reacted and innovated to reflect the change and have become a dynamic, multi-platform brand, which last year made record profit contribution, despite these challenges. We're not just surviving, we're thriving. And that, in the most part, is because of four key areas of connective focus. A 360 mindset, a hard-working digital strategy, we've repositioned print as an experience, and have inspired brand expen uh, I can't even say it, <laughs> brand extensions. So today I'm going to share with you a few lessons that we have learned through our evolution. OK. <clears throat> so in 2015, I inherited a small team, and it's even smaller now. Um, a bit like Sarah, I only have 10 full-time staff. That's across editorial, design, production, din uh, print, digital, social, and that's including myself. Cost efficiencies and streamlining, as we all know, are crucial to financial success. But this can only work when you breed the right culture and stitch up the thinking. The only way we could achieve our true potential, I believed, and transform us from a limiting print-first mindset was to get the buy-in from all of my staff. No one works in silo. We now all work across multiple great quality platforms whilst my maintaining our specialist knowledge. We start with one great idea and then look at all of the different ways that we can uh, feed this into our audience and that they can interact with it. We think 360. So we have our, our magazine, which we have in the UK, and then we have international editions and syndication. We have olivemagazine.com. We're on Apple News. We're on social media. We have our digital app, and we have a podcast. And this is just a few of the things that we do. OK. Each platform can enrich each other, too. A step-by-step -step video enriches a static online recipe. A podcast can bring to life an interview on the printed page. We stay connected to our users for longer. Isn't this a good-looking graph? <laughs> so make digital work harder. I referred to Olive at the start as small but mighty, because if you look at our ABC figures, we're specialist but small fry. But take a look at our growth since we launched in 2015 on olivemagazine.com, and it tells a very different story. In the last 12 months alone, we've grown our UK page views by 190%. It's good looking. <laughs> so how did we do that? In 2016, we migrated onto a new streamlined internal SEO-friendly CMS called Fabric. Based on WordPress, Fabric has been designed to be an adaptable, adaptable platform that caters for all of Immediate Media's digitally focused brands. 
With every innovation and update on that platform, the whole company benefits. Fabric gave back my digital editor control of our website, rather than being at the mercy of developers who don't have a direct relationship with our customers. By being able to manipulate the position and prominence of articles and sections on the home page and landing pages, by reacting to exactly what our readers want when they want it, we have increased the performance um, of all of our content, but our Christmas content last year was fourfold, and subscription referrals went up by five times. We've also implemented an evergreen content strategy, a bit like Sarah again, very inspiring. <laughs> We've uh, a huge database of recipes at olivemagazine.com, as well as restaurant recommendations, travel guides, videos, and more. The team now work tireless, tirelessly to ensure that all of our content remains relevant and SEO optimized. We know there is a huge continuing demand from our readers for our archive content, as well as the new. New content that we do do is based on the 360 approach that I mentioned earlier. It's commissioned based on user data, and the audience is always at the heart of everything we do. We also utilized visual search. We maximized one of the, uh, the potential of one of our key strengths, which hopefully you can see from here, which is our beautiful food photography. Uh, we ensured that we appeared on Google's image-led rich results and in mo mobile-friendly Google images. We're now up 365% year-on-year on mobile ranking for Google. Our chocolate brownie recipe, which is one of the first recipes that we had on the website, has become our best ranking uh, recipe to date, and that's because of this work. We've also experimented. We've now started working hard on affiliate links this year to help complete the user journey. You can shop for ingredients on olivemagazine.com when you look on a recipe via Whisk. You can buy foodie gifts or book a foodie festival. We've also seen great success collaborating with other brands in the wider immediate media group sharing expertise and widening our audiences, from Gardner's World magazine and RadioTimes.com to Bike Radar and our recent wellness launch in the moment. We've also built and engaged with our community. At the beginning, like many brands, we relied on social for digital traffic, but that's a scary and vulnerable place to be. And now that's flipped to search and then direct, but social still makes no less a crucial or relevant tool for us. Instead, we use social as a community builder, for instant audience insight, for PR and engagement. We're also experimenting with further ways to do this, from starting a Facebook community group and increasing our live video content to complement our business page and to soften the effects of the news feed about turn. We're also utilizing Instagram stories to tease our readers on updated archive content. Um, we've also repositioned print as an experience, and print is still very much an important part of our business. It's a challenge, but adversity breeds brilliance. We're slowing decline and sharpening our saw. Olive's editorial is better than it ever has been. We make bold and brave covers, which I hope you can see here. Our Christmas 20, uh, 2017 cover, which is the one on the left, and this really doesn't do it justice because it's a print product, um, saw the highest sales since 2013. That is unheard of. For this, we applied numerous unusual production techniques to make it really special, tactile project that you want to stroke, you want to keep, and you want to cherish it forever. We included soft touch and gloss, metallic foiling, a split screen background, as well as, of course, that must make, must eat, uh, Ferrero Rocher chocolate and hazelnut profiterole stack. That is a winning recipe. Um, we also shot one of our covers on a smartphone last year, which is the one on the right. That was just on an iPhone, no touch-ups, nothing. That is taken on a phone, produced in print. And then we got our readers to take photos on their uh, smartphone of the same recipe and upload to social. As a result, our covers have been nominated for numerous industry awards and won two consecutive internal awards at Media Media for cover of the year, beating dozens of our best-selling brands. We also use smart cover mounts. We don't have a dedicated marketing person at Olive, just 10 people, but again, we make every idea work as hard as we can. At Christmas, for this cover on the left, we partnered with Green and Black's Chocolate so they, that they could cook the cover. Around Easter and Mother's Day last year, we gave away a family-style cookbook so our readers could cook together at home. To match our vegan cover this month, we gave away a vegan chocolate bar. We saw uplift on every issue. This is added value that can't be replicated digitally. We're creating a sensory experience. We're also doing integrated content with integrity. We work hard on integrated content with brands that we feel like are a natural fit for Olive and our readers. 
We've used Tesco cookware in our photo shoots. We've given life hack box outs for bird's eye peas in our recipe features. We've established ourselves as experts in our fields and our readers trust our recommendations. So it's crucial that we partner with brands that we know our readers will love. Trust gives us the power to sell. Later this year, we're also working on a sponsored themed issue with a partner based on reader research and what they highlighted as a preferred cuisine. And then we get to the multi-platform bit. As well as print and digital, we do lots more besides. <clears throat> we were one of the first food magazines in the UK to launch a podcast in 2016, and we're part of a new wave of British brand podcasts tapping into the estimated 5.6 million podcast users in the UK alone. Since then, we've had nearly 120,000 listens. We're becoming our readers' cook-along soundtrack. There's so much potential in this medium. According to US research, podcast listeners get to around 90% of a podcast and rarely skip the ads. Now, with increased... An ad Sorry, <laughs> this really isn't my forte. I'm a better writer, so bear with me. Um, now, with increased analytics and awareness of the platform, this is a seriously engaged section of the audience we can't ignore. We're now starting to see sponsorship and paid partnerships along with our social platforms come through. We also have awards. Building on the trust we have with our audience, we enrich our content further through revenue generating awards in our different areas of specialism. We have had great success with our biannual supermarket awards where we have a series of themed taste tests planned and promoted around the peaks in our audience engagement calendar. And we're also increasing those next year. I'm pleased to also announce that this year we're launching the Olive Chef Awards in partnership with Dark Horse Wines, which will celebrate the underdogs of the restaurant world and bolster our restaurant content. Our events profit is seven times larger than it was two years ago. This is because we're more efficient, thanks to 360 thinking, and strategic, thanks to reader research. We've gone from uh, two events a year to six, ranging from small-scale exclusive uh, private dinners in our readers' favorite restaurants to masterclasses and tated, uh, tutored tastings. We have our mobile edition, too. After winning awards for our current interactive mobile edition of Olive Magazine, We've again responded to what the reader wants and are transforming the way we create, curate our magazine content via our app. This week, actually, we're launching on our Fabric mobile platform, which is a new simplified newsfeed style mobile edition similar to Apple News, where we've had great success. We create at least two videos a week to promote our content via social platforms and encourage engagement. Some we do in a studio with really high production values, and others we do in our cookery writers' homes with a really home shot feel. Both have gone viral, and both have led to partnerships with brands to create content using our style with their ingredients and their equipment. And in the last two years, we've had uh, six recipe books in the UK and created bespoke food content and uh, travel bookazines for international markets. And given our great quality content, there's always opportunity for more. So, specialist and sustainable, small but mighty. Created by passionate foodies for passionate foodies, Olive's 15-year journey proved that niche can evolve and expand without compromising on brand values. Just remember, think 360, put the customer first, make digital work harder, make print an experience, and innovate with brand extensions. If you can intelligently publish in a connected, cost-effective, and creative way, You'll be a success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura. Um, another, le yeah, five minutes to go, uh, yeah. answering <laughs> questions. You can come a bit <laughs> to the front. Do you have a question? If not, I would like to talk figures with you. Uh, um, no, but I go for your question first. Broadcast, the broadcast, the, what the are podcast. they about? Yeah. So, uh, again, the they just follow the same three key pillars that we have. We always work as a brand, not as a, in, in the silo. So, uh, they follow Cook, Eat, Explore. So, we'll have uh, chats. It might, be about, it might be about how to cook the perfect uh, cheesecake, and our cookery writers will discuss that. It might be an interview with a leading chef that's visiting mm -hmm. an area, or it might be about uh, if we've just been to Lisbon, our top 10 places to go to Lisbon on holiday where you can eat great. Food, great food, great tarts, whatever it might be. Drink great cherry liqueur, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
How much do you take recipes from your target groups, from the people outside that are buying uh, your magazine or anything? So in terms really of user-generated yeah, content? Yeah, re really? Uh, no, so we don't do user-generated content at, at the moment. No, so okay. it's all produced in-house, but it's definitely something we're open to explore. And uh, yeah, it's, it's looking as part of our future. That may, might be something that we do. In terms of user content, it's more interaction and engagement. That's how we okay. work with our users at the moment. But there is definitely room for that. Lots of other brands in the food world do do that. Mm -hmm. Another question of you. If not, coming back to the figures, yes. how, <laughs> what is your revenue strategy? Revenue strategy. Well, it's interesting to say that. We had a big strategy meeting this week, and obviously we're a business and we need to make revenue, but the key with our, with our strategy isn't to think we need to get this on the EBITDA, it's to think what do our customers want. And that's where we start. We look for what our customers want, we fill in the gaps and make sure we're doing it the best we can. So we don't think strategy-wise in terms of numbers or... Um, okay, but uh, it, digitally, do I pay mm. for the website? Oh, so sorry. So th that's my question. No, As a, how, do you make, how do you make money? <laughs> how do we make so, money? Um, so we don't have subscription on the website at the moment. We uh, make money through advertising partnerships. Ah, okay. So our biggest revenue generator is print at the moment still. So that is about two-thirds of our business. And then it's, then it's digital and then anything else as well. But oh, interesting. it's something that we're looking to explore. And again, it's, it, that will come with um, innovations in technology. So at the moment, Fabric's um, still kind of in, it, in its infancy, given it's only been around for a year and a half. Um, but we're looking at new technologies to help with things like personalization yeah. and curated content online, which might be paid for in the future. OK, please, I yes. Have a, I have a question. Yes. Uh, James, James from FIP. Sorry, slightly leading question because I know, I know a, little, a little bit about it. How, how do you guys deal with having a very large competitor sat, you know, sometimes in the office and sometimes just yes. down the street looking over your shoulder? Does that, be, I'm talking about BBC Good Food, which is a yeah. really big uh, brand in the same mm. space. Does that bother you or has that given you freedom in a way to explore a kind of new space in food outside of what they do? Yeah, so we share a test kitchen with our direct competitor, which uh, sounds odd to some people, um, BBC Good Food. Um, but I think it, for us it made it, there is challenges. Um, sometimes we might create a great recipe and then shock horror. You might see it again somewhere else uh, or a different version of it. That's the nature of the beast. But what I think it's given us is um, a real focus on who we are and what we do. Um, I know exactly who our readers are, with, and I think we're very different to BBC Good Food. Mm -hmm. it, it's still food content, but our readers, as I mentioned before, are, are super foodies. They are adventurous cooks. They're, there's definitely different types. So Much younger? Uh, it depends. So mm -hmm. online, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and even print on newsstand, they're definitely younger, but then our subscribers are slightly older. So they're empty mm -hmm. nesters. Our newsstands are probably 30 to 40, my age. Mm -hmm. um, and they're the ones who are time poor but money rich. You know, they've been to Vietnam and want to come and cook those ingredients on the weekend um, uh, or have a really quick meal of an evening or go to a restaurant or weekend away that we've recommended. Whereas the uh, newsstand, uh, sorry, the subscriber base, which are the empty nesters, they'll take a long time cooking things for their family and experimenting and they'll, they'll want to do the Michelin star bucket list around the country country that we recommend mm -hmm. things like that so um whereas good food are, are very very different they're kind of uh, I, I shouldn't speak for them because i expect they disagree and i think they're trying to disagree with this but they're much more sort of down the road people who want to learn how to cook but might not necessarily know how to do it our our readers can cook uh -huh. are passionate about mm -hmm. cooking and passionate about eating mm -hmm. uh, talk, talk uh, there is a question in the very last row i'm going to, yes I'm going to drink. we can hear you yes Yeah. Yeah. Part no, I, I see that as just another platform that can enrich and complete complete our user journey. For me, that's about it's about keeping our users as engaged and. Um, with us as long as possible you know they should be shopping with us they should be cooking mm -hmm. with us they mm -hmm. should be listening to us when mm -hmm. they're cooking mm -hmm. um and i know i haven't learned much or had much personal experience with alexa but with google home for example and google assistant 
they have uh, a thing where you can say what you want to cook, so whether it be Portuguese custard tarts, and they'll find that recipe for you and then they'll read it out loud for you. And that's all about SEO and optimizing for, for um, voice search as well, isn't it? It's, again, that's a, a capability example. Um, but it's definitely something I'm keen to explore. I think, I think it's a great innovation. It's just, just finding what's right for your readers. Your readers will soon, or listeners, or whatever they might be, your customer will soon tell you if it's the right platform for you. Last question from my part. If you had a yes. dream, if you had a dream, <laughs> what do you see with Olive in, let's say, five years' time? Total <laughs> utopian visionary. <laughs> what do you see? What do you want to see? Uh, they, they come to us every single day, and we're part of their food journey every single day. Okay. Laura, thank you very, very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.